All right, so we got how the Imperium reacted to Gollum's resurrection in Warhammer 40k lore. So here's the video. G'day, guys and gal. You're probably thinking one of two things right now. What? Either, gee whiz, Major Kill, what a super awesome, interesting video idea. Also, your hair looks great today, and I'd love for you to ravage me. It or, does. Whoa. Major Kill, you demented drongo. Didn't you already make this video a while ago? Kind of. I made a video that was the broad strokes of how the galaxy reacted to Gilliman's resurrection. And while I did glaze over the Imperium's response, I missed out on some of the most interesting reactions, many of which were actually negative. Not everyone was happy that the Lord of Ultramar was here to save the day. There were purges, conflicts, and even many civil wars. Man, listen, when you come here to save the day like Superman, bro, there's this, this gonna be conflict. The, bro, that's like me coming through and saving every, bro, that, bro let, listen. That's like Titus going out bad, right? He got stabbed here, he got stabbed here, bro. Bro, 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 he got a black eye right here, bro. And I come through and I save the day. Just because I alter, you know, reality a little bit, and now everybody, you know, every, now everything's like a big mess, it don't mean nothing. Like, I mean, well, it does mean something, but at the end of the day, bro, like, man, man, they'll live. The Ecclesiarchy and Gilliman also have this weird relationship <laughs> with G-Man despising them, but realizing their value, whilst the Ecclesiarchy tries to gargle his prime balls. The point I'm making is that there were very nuanced, interesting, and unexpected reactions within the various Imperial factions that deserve a deeper look. After all, Gilliman's resurrection has been the girthiest piece of lore we've gotten in years, and it's worth playing around with. But before we get started, there are about 50 Major Kill merch hoodies left of both colors. Yo. And I really want to move on from these and start planning something new and awesome. Man. So if you buy a Major Kill hoodie, you'll get not one, but two t-shirts free. Man, wait, T-shirts come in the same size as the hoodie. I've been thinking about, like, doing colors. merch, but, like, After you know, I kind of want to get, like, you know, get my channel more established. So I thought, why not just you know, give start you guys doing some merch. delicious value, hmm. get the hoodies in the hands of more people, and prevent some rubbish from ending up in the landfill. In terms of pure quality, it just doesn't get much better. The hoodies are soft, warm, and durable. I've run this through the washer and dryer many times, and it hasn't shrunk or lost its, you know, hoodiness. Nor have the designs okay. or anything faded at all. I also specifically requested these types of By the way, like, what type of, like, yo, I was thinking, I should put like one, it's I don't just want to put my name like on not. the shirt. Basically, but like, would that be like the the acceptable or something like that? I don't know, man. I have to come up with actually some type of design. Link in the description. Let's get these boys to a good home. Today we'll go deep into the lore of each Imperial sub faction's reaction to Gilliman's resurrection, okay. ranging from unhappy Space Marines to the custodians that considered murdering Gilliman, all the way to the Imperial Navy, who have some harsh opinions of their own. Oh wow! Now, let's get into it. Let's get into it. <laughs> Here we go. Despite a bit of controversy that we'll dive into today, the overall reaction to Gilliman's return was overwhelmingly positive. He was a son of the Imperium's God, returned to them at their hour of need. It literally was the most Jesus-esque messiah bullshit ever that did nothing but confirm and elevate their beliefs. The Ultramarines were ecstatic and instantly more or less reformed their legion under his banner without question, oh, helping wow. Gilliman to reach terror. Imperial forces on Terra were more than friendly to G-Man, with the Sisters of Silence helping him to defeat Magnus, and then the Custodian Guard fighting alongside him at the Lion's Gate during a very His name is G -Man? invasion of Terra. All in okay. all, a very good first impression that, that went a long way to affirming Gilliman's return as a genuine boon for the Loyalists, and not just some cheeky, schemey shit by Titsnitch. In saying that though, the Custodians did not trust Gilliman. The Primarchs had ruined their Lord's dream and doomed mankind to a slow decay, but they also really didn't give a shit. They were literally like, boohoo, who, Mr. Mathematics has returned with his big space book. The Custodes know the truth of the Imperium, what occurred during the Horus Heresy and what the Primarchs were like. They honestly just didn't really give much of a shit. They were happy for Gilliman to take leadership of the Imperium, as that still didn't give him authority or command over the Custodian Guard. It was only wow. when Gilliman met with his father and then the Emperor gave the Custodians the order to help Gilliman via his emissaries, which are special Custodians who can speak to the Emperor in their dreams, did they step up to the plate and actually begin working with him. At this point, they were well and truly Team G-Man, with a number of them even actually being inspired by him and admiring him. They never totally wow. trusted him though. Many of the custodians with him theorized how many of them it would take to kill him, and they had numerous contingencies in case the Lord of Ultramar went rogue. Dang, so bro, they was like, okay, cool, bro. You're back and everything like that. Like, you know, you may be like a little cuckoo for buku buffs, but like you're back or whatever. But like, let's just like, you know, be Batman and let's plan like some type of like, you know, antidote towards him, you know, just in case, you know, he go, uh, bananas. Wowzers. Okay. The Sisters of Silence were in a similar boat to the Custodes, okay. but a lot less expressive. I'll tie the reaction of the Sisters of Battle to that of the Ecclesiarchy. The Sisters of Battle haven't had much screen time with G-Man, 
However, their panties have been destroyed by the female ejaculate equivalent of Niagara Falls. They are hyper-religious, so seeing Gilliam in return is like the fucking best. I mean, the sisters literally shit the bed whenever they see a custodian guard, so imagine how they feel about Gilliman. Not to mention, he was resurrected with the help of Saint Celestine and fought alongside her in his opening years. Oh. As she is the sister of all sisters, Gilliman had all the endorsements he- Oh, so she's like the goat of all girls, basically. She's like the head honcho of like all women, wow. Wow. I got a question though, like is she single or what? Like I just- I'm just asking. Ever needed. However, the ecclesiarchy wasn't so clean cut. See, the Sisters of Battle had a purpose. They killed bad guys with extreme prejudice and effectiveness. The ecclesiarchy killed innocent people and fiddled the kittles diddles. Gilliman was enraged that they even existed as it was the complete opposite of what his father wanted and his initial reaction was the desire to tear it all down. However, he stopped when he realized how destructive that would be and how faith was one of the only things keeping the Imperium together. He had a priest, a representative of the Ecclesiarchy, accompanying him who wanted to suck his ultra cock. The priest would occasionally say shit that would piss Gilliman off. G-Man would get angry and I shit you not, the priest got religiously turned on by the thought of him getting killed by Gilliman. I know it hurts sometimes, but you'll get over it. What? Man, you freak as a weight. What do you mean you get? Oh, no, nah, bro. See, and this is what I'm saying, bro. I think I'm getting a little too deep, bro. I'm in too deep. I'm in too deep. Wow. Oh, I think I'm. I think I'm too deep, bro. This is ridiculous. This is ribunculus. You're telling me as she's thinking about herself getting absolutely pounded. No, 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 no. Not in that way. You're telling me the way you... I, I can't save myself. After G-Man had assessed the situation and disposed of a few bad actors within the upper echelon of the Ecclesiarchy, he concluded that whilst this wasn't ideal, the faith of the Ecclesiarchy and its influence could be a powerful tool for good. So he basically said what he needed to say to get them on side often debating with a few of the priests, but overall indulging their religious fantasies. I mean, Gilliman himself has started questioning if the Emperor is a god, since the Chaos Gods are clearly real. Overall, it's very interesting watching such a practical dude deal with shit such as faith and religion. Gilliman's experience with the High Lords of Terror, however, didn't go as cleanly. When he returned, he more or less instantly took control of the Imperium, ordering a planet-wide purge of hidden Xenos, mutants, Chaos Cults, and many, many corrupt officials. Oh, he's a crash out. killed within weeks. He also heavily curbed the power of the High Lords as a loyalty test. Most of them passed. However, a few were forced to retire or felt as if they had lost too much power. Hence, they attempted a coup that involved custodian guards fighting Minotaur space marines before the coup was crushed and its members killed. The head of the Navigator Houses, once one of the most powerful people in the galaxy, tried to extort Gilliman and get more wealth to allow G-Man to use his navigators. Gilliman responded by having him flogged and dragged through the streets. Needless to say, Gilliman got his navigators without paying a single dollar. Ooh! Oh yeah, no, 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 oh, oh no. That man, bro, he took the compasses. He took the compasses. He said, oh, he said, oh, you want to finesse me? Oh, you want to finesse me? Oh, oh, so you think that, wow. Okay, so since you want to finesse me, how about I drag you out in front of the millions and embarrass you? That's what he, he that's what he did. Wowzers. He got the compasses for free. Oh my goodness, bro. He got, bro. He got the navigators for free. Ninety nine, bro. Buy free, get one free. That is, bro. Oh no, that, oh, that's nasty either. work. Either through diplomacy, execution, or humiliation, G-Man was able to get each and every High Lord on side in record time, making them very focused and competent while he went off to pursue his legendary Bro, he's really him. Crusade. Speaking of the Indominus Crusade, how about the Imperial Navy? How did they react? Well, whilst they also fell in line, a lot of them weren't super stoked. The Navy isn't the most religious organization. It's full of proud, practical men and women who think very highly of themselves and who honor tradition. So Gilliman returning wasn't this holy shit, God is back type of vibe. G-Man is a micromanager that doesn't give a shit about people's traditions or pride. To him, warships are pieces on a chessboard. Their value is what they can do for him and the Imperium. He will always choose the best ship to lead in the most optimal engagements. He doesn't give a fuck if one ship has more honors or a better pedigree. The Navy, on the other hand, does. 
There was a battle group commander who, after railing a bunch of space coke, went on a massive rant about Gilliman and how the Primarch's institutions didn't rename her battle group correctly after they had merged with one another. She was very unhappy about it, upset that her glorious battleship wasn't the new name of her merged battle group due to technicalities. Gilliman also felt a similar way about the Imperial Navy, hating their desire for glory and honor, which they seemed to put ahead of actually decent battle strategies. Whenever he senses one of them putting pride ahead of practicality, he immediately removes them from command. In one such engagement, he even gave command to the Mechanicus fleet accompanying them, because they had the best plan to deal with an enemy stronghold. For context, Gilliman has never really given a shit about battle fleet honor, preferring to use a swarm of smaller ships to give the enemy a death by a thousand cuts, as well as provide himself with a lot of tactical options, rather than having these fuck off massive warships that just bomb each other's tits off until the one with the thicker shields and bigger guns wins. <laughs> <laughs> and he was right. You know, I mean, here's the thing, right? This, this uh, I'm gonna call him. I'm gonna call him G Man, bro. Listen, bro. G Man, he's not just a pushover, bro. He's gonna get what he want. Um, he's smart. He's very technical. I can already tell. I mean, obviously, let's be honest. He's not. He's not better than nobody uh, on the Salamander squad at all. So, I just have to say that just because. But um, I can't lie to you, bro. G Man, bro. He got people falling in line. I'm gonna be honest with you. He's a, he's a tough cookie, but again, he's not better than nobody on the Salamanders. He was able to take out the Word Bearer's flagship and also nearly claim the World Eater's flagship in one engagement, using a ragtag makeshift fleet of smaller ships. Overall though, despite their grievances, no Imperial ship commander is disobeying Gilliman or turning to chaos purely because he's got a bit of an overbearing boss that doesn't care about tradition. It's more so, you know, just petty ranting. I know, I know, you want to know how the Space Marines reacted. Well, 95% of it was similar to the Ultramarines. Fuck yeah, a loyalist Primarch is back. Let's get this bread. However, the 5% were very, very interesting and kind of embarrassing. As mentioned, the Minotaurs helped a few of the ex-High Lords with their coup attempt against Gilliman and were only called off at the last minute. This wasn't really them reacting as much as it was them being completely loyal to specific individuals. The Blood Angels were saved by Gilliman's arrival during the devastation of Baal, hence they were honored to see him and gratefully took the Primarch's reinforcements he offered. Oh, okay. Well, you know, other than Gabriel Seth. He wasn't too happy about it. The uh -oh. Imperial Fists were also happy, being one of the first chapters to greet Gilliman due to their role as the Praetorians of Terra. The Dark Angels acted like fucking morons, which was disappointing as they are one of my favorite chapters. Basically, they thought Gilliman was coming to them in person because he found out about the Fallen. They were like, shit, he's gonna murder our asses. Maybe we should blow up his ship and kill him, then try cover it up. Yeah, they literally thought that. Fortunately, that moment of retardation passed, and they spoke with G-Man and are now firmly on his side when they realized he just wanted to give them fancy new Space Marine warriors. The meeting with the Black Templars was spicy. Helbrecht is a staunch, honorable man who doesn't get talked down to ever. He debated and even beefed with Gilliman. G-Man wanted him to help the wider Imperium. Helbrecht wanted to keep chasing Gazkull. Eventually, G-Man convinced him to abandon his selfish crusade in favor of helping the Imperium, but it was probably the most grief G-Man had gotten so far. To make matters worse, a sub-faction within the Black Templars rejected their Primarch's reinforcements and started killing them, creating a mini-civil war that the Custodes themselves had to get involved in. Just goes to show that weaponized autism is a double-edged blade. <laughs> we haven't seen many of the other original chapter's reactions to Gilliman. However, since pretty much everyone has taken up the Primaris and happily uses them, it's safe to say that the reactions have been very positive <laughs> across the board. The Inquisition's reaction to Gilliman is a hard one to pinpoint, as there are so many conflicting sub-factions within it. Some would be stoked, some would be cautious, some are probably plotting his assassination, some are probably plotting to stop the plots of his assassination. We haven't had much in the way of in-law examples, However, the High Lord representative of the Inquisition is on G-Man's side for now, so we can assume most of them are as well. The Mechanicus is also pretty pro G-Man and reacted positively. After all, Belsarius' call was instrumental in Gilliman's resurrection, and he is one of the Mechanicus's top dogs. It isn't all sunshine and rainbows though. Many of the cult Mechanicus are scared of invention and innovation, something that Gilliman has now authorized and encouraged, whilst others, like Call, love that shit and have been very happy with the new order. Either way, mm. Gilliman is a much more effective and efficient leader of the Imperium. Bro. Two things that get a tech priest cogs all nice and oily. While the initial after. reactions were a bit all over the place, everyone has fallen in line one way or another. This is why the Indominus Crusade was so successful. An Imperium united and purged of corruption, pulling its resources into a common goal, is an Imperium that's going to be pretty hard to stop. 
just goes to show that mankind has always been capable of winning 40k. They just had to get out of their own way. If you enjoy the video and you want to support the channel, then pick up the hood. Bro. Bro. Hey, yo, Gilliman, bro. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. Yo. Bro, this man, Gilliman, got people falling in line. He got people paying their taxes. Bro, he got people making free meals. He got people scared to advance. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. That kind of sound like me if I was in a uh, Warhammer 40k unit, bro, 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 hey, bro. If I came back, first of all, because you know I, I'm really loved in the in the Warhammer 40k uh, universe, bro. If I came back, bro, bro, I have everybody falling in line just like Gilliman, bro. Just like the just like the G boy, just like the G man, bro. Wowzers! I didn't know he that, bro. He moved mountains, bro. Like, bro, bro. He had. I'm gonna be honest with you, and this might be cringe, but bro, he, bro, he had aura, bro. Like, bro, bro, he had aura, bro. This man was Mr. Aura, bro. He came back, bro. Everybody was falling in line. Uh, bro, people were, were afraid to mess up. He was helping people out. Like, he wasn't just like a, he wasn't just like this, this destroyer or whatever, bro. He was, came, he came through, help out the blood angels and stuff like that. I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean, here's the thing, right? When you have somebody like that, that's like at that, like, height of, like, importance or whatever, bro. Obviously, like you know, a lot of people are, are, are gonna like you know mess with it, mess with it, whatever. Um, obviously, you know, you're gonna have the people you know who don't really believe in like you know people coming back, whatever. They're gonna be like, oh, okay, well, you bro came back, all right, you know, the Brady Bunch is on at nine. Are we watching it or what? Like you know, they don't care. But at the end of the day, man, comment down below. What do you guys think about this? Um, I definitely like this, bro. I'm again, and I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to say this. Um, Gilliman, you know, you're cool and everything like that. Uh, but don't ever think that you can even mess with anybody. On the Salamander squad, especially if I'm there, bro. I'll, bro, I'll get the weakest link to mess you up. Don't, bro, don't even, don't even look at my faction's way. But other than that, I'm just yapping. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. I'll see you guys in the next mount, and peace out, y'all.